All right. Sorry about that. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? hear me all right oh my gosh i'm sorry about that i don't know you guys, guys saw it pops up and it's just like 20 19 18, 18. it started, started that update, update i swear like on friday something, something. it was, it was like, like friday yesterday i think i swear it was like friday and all, all of a sudden, sudden it just pops up and it's like oh goodbye that's not very helpful in the middle, middle of the meeting this happens all, all the time our it department does some wacky stuff, stuff. Okay, so, okay. okay. All right. well, thank, thank God, God this, this is why I'm using this, like, basically, as an end client, computers use this. Um, all right. <clears throat> all right, yep. yep. Hello? What? what? I can, I can, I can hear you. Oh, oh, this worked. worked. Fantastic. Fantastic. Alright, so... Did I... I thought, thought somebody, somebody was just talking. I didn't hear them. Okay, I need to just... Okay, you're not, not able to hear me? Okay. Um, let, let me, me just rejoin, rejoin myself. myself. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Natush? Maybe, uh, maybe you'll try. Alright, can everybody else hear me? So, moral of the story is we need to do that thing um, with the, um, you know, we'll, 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 do that. We'll, do that. we'll do the NumPy stuff at some point, so it looks like we can get up rate. It should not be too hard. Um, the, main, the, main, the main difficulty of that, I would imagine, actually, you know, that would actually be a good use of the decorator. There is a good decorator. Because you can take the doc string and you can just shove it into the doc string, right, for examples. Um, that, that might have actually be a really good approach there. there. Because or else you, you have to worry about like format strings and some of these guys are like have a raw have the raw prefix and I don't know how that works with it. I guess it needs the raw prefix too. Um why do we have that? Um yeah, yeah so you you have, have to worry about format strings. It probably just makes sense to throw it in front of examples on each one. And, and this is actually this is probably be a pretty dang easy issue if somebody wants to go with that. I mean not you know, as, as far, far as things, things go, go. <laughs> text, text formatting is always sort of harder than it might seem, but, but um, you, you know, know, it hopefully it wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, and, and so, so it, it looks, looks like, like log set. So I did see added in the regression example. Um, and so that should. That should be fine here. So it's not model experience. Not found a read and it failed. So that sounds like a question of all right here. Alright, and this is the Oh, and this is actually a good thing we're talking about. Okay. 
Okay, great. great. Nice I saw, yeah, yeah, great. great. Um, so, so let's just get rid of the little boss, and then we're good. Um, since we don't need that anymore, and we don't need to just get it great. Um, all right, great. great. I, think I think that, that did, did the trick, trick then. then. Um, all right, and, and then, then I don't think we need this. this. Okay, so, so and, and this, this is actually, actually good. So, so. Mm. um. So, so what, 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 and then here's, here's what's, what's worth peppering here for everyone. Um, okay, okay, so we realized um, that a lot, lot of what, what, a lot of what we have been doing here, um, uh, okay, okay, so, so we, we realized that what's, what's been, been happening here is we, and this is probably not the best way to do this, um, we, we keep writing example Python files that are like regression or classification, um, and we really don't need to keep doing this like a million times. Uh, so, um, this is an example using the Iris data set, which is added with the, the data sets, you know, the data set, um, uh, data set source stuff that got added recently. Um, but this maybe isn't the best way to do it. So, so what I should have done here um, was, you know, um, he, 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 he yeah, added essentially you know, what, what, what looks like the, um, so, so and, and we need to abstract this a little bit, but, um, we'll, we'll leave this like this, um, we can, we can actually go and shoot this, but the point is to have something sort of in between two of these things. Um, and what we want to do is, is have a generic example Python file that, that gets used for like a regression model or a classification model, right? And, and that, that way, we, we don't have to write unique examples for each one. And sometimes it makes sense to write a unique example, but, but a lot of times, you know, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Like, we just need to show here's how you import the model, here's how you use the model, right? Um, so, let's see. So, in this, and so, so here we load, we, we, we import the model, right? And we just train it. This is exactly the same as the, um, and it's the same as the, uh, like the quick start stuff. Um, now the, the other one was, oh yeah, here it is. So this, this approach is, and that one was under model, LGBM classifier, or LGBM regressor. Um, this one is, is under just examples. Um, and so this is like, you know, an example of doing average classification using, and, and this uses the, now, now the baked in, um, iris data set source. Um, but, but this is maybe not the most, most straightforward, so we should probably, we should probably change this to be like, you know, lower than that. But, um, let me just actually do that so it's just it looks weird. Um, so, this is the, in, in the same way that we have, you know, you can load models using their, um, entry point name, right? You can load sources using their entry point name. Um, so we need to load source of data sets. Um, oops. And, and so, so we want to load that train data set and the task data set. Um, and then we need to, you know, instantiate them. Um, so configure model. So the data sets we're using are, you know, the iris stream, the iris test, and this is instantiating them. All right, so. And then we just pass the data sets down here, right? Um, so, and I, I, I so, does anybody have a question on what's going on here? Does this make sense to everyone? Or because I know it probably looks a little weird, right? Because this this maybe needs a different call with the sources, right? Maybe maybe we need a different call to load and instantiate because this is sort of a little 
a little awkward, right? right? So, so we, we have the, the we're loading the class itself, and then we're we're loading the um, you know, then we're instantiating the class. So, so maybe, maybe we need a different a different um, maybe we need a different way to do this that, that it might look better, right? Um, we, we could have a call where we say, you know, model. We, we could change, change it so it's it's like, and this is where you know, I'm asking asking for feedback here, right? So. We could do this, where we were to instantiate model, right? If we instantiate the base class model and we pass as the first argument the model to instantiate, that may be, you know, a good way, a good way to do this, to, to do this, so that it, that it makes, you know, where we essentially load that class, right? We call this is effectively the same thing as model load, you know, sysrv1. And then we can change that, right? right. Um, do, do, do people, people think, think this is sort of a more? Do you, do you see a better way to do this? I guess. Um, or does, does this seem like, like a good way to do it, or should we do it a different way? Keep it separate. Okay, okay. Does anybody think, think we should combine it? Separate it is. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's keep it separate then. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, yeah, let's just, just keep it separate. separate then. All right. Um, and we'll just make a note that that's what we decided to do here. Um, oh, and that brings me to another thing. It's, it's, so, so, Yash and I had, had met and we'd done the, uh, like, uh, what's the word? So, this, this is like, I don't know if you guys have seen these, like, architecture review documents or architecture review something. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Architecture, whatever. whatever. Um, the, the idea is that, that, and you'll just see it here. So, so the, the idea is that, so the idea is that we're going to start writing down things under Docs Arch um, on, you know, what, what, are, what, what are the architecture decisions that we're making, right? And so this is, this is the stuff that they yeah, and I had come up with for the second party plugins. Because um, there's a lot of stuff in here that, that you know, and it's tribal, like, like the, the term that often used is tribal, tribal, tribal knowledge, right? right? It's because, because we don't, we have these architecture level decisions that are not quite the same as documentation, and, and so it would be helpful to have these architecture documents to say what we're doing, right? So, and then this is, um, you know, this is this is kind of an architecture decision. It's an architecture decision that's already been made, right? Um, but it's an architecture decision nonetheless, right? Um, and then I'm not talking about the example, I'm talking about splitting the load and an um, in instantiation, right? Um, so we may, um, like, so let's see if I have a box. And the idea here, the reason why I'm saying this is because you guys wanted to propose, right? If you want to propose a change to the architecture, because we, we talked, talked about, you know, we're pre-API stability, yeah. like we pre-made it right now. Um, maybe you think can change, right? right? So if you think that something should change, then, then just let us all, you know, let everybody else know, and, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll say, let's, let's change it, right? Um, so, so if we wanted, wanted to do that, that we, we might write a document that would be like, you know, just for this. Um, right, right, we, we could, could say... Um, so what was it? Yeah, it's like context, decision, consequences. Okay. So context, decision, consequences. And this is, um, uh, so we've already done this, All right? Um, so this would be, you know, model or object and it's loading. And instantiation, right? And that is accepted context. So we have a plugin based 
system where we uh, can load and instantiate uh, loaded classes um, with a few options. We can, I guess this is really. But this is a perfect example. Um, this is really just like an API decision. Um, so we have two options that we can allow for loading and instantiation. Instantiation at the same time. Instantiation in samples. So we will plug in the base system, we can load and instantiate load passes, we have two options, we can allow for loading and instantiation at the same time, or he is separate. Um, and we decided to keep it separate. Uh, uh, we decided that it's more straightforward. Forward to end users, keep it separate. Um, and so examples should show, for examples that do dynamic loading should, should keep um, things separate, or keep, or examples that do dynamic loading should. Uh, load classes, then instantiate instead of all at once, right? And then if somebody were to say, you know, like do a PR and we're reviewing each other's PRs, and we see that somebody didn't do it, we can say, hey, you know, check out this architecture document. Um, we decided that we don't want to do it this way. Uh, and then it, it tells them why to, right? And now we don't always have to um, say why to do this, right? Or you know, that way they understand. Um, um, they understand you know, why, why we made that decision. Um, and we can just put in a little code block here. Is this a research text? I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? All right, so this would be, you know, option one. So, together, and then separate. discussion around this kind of stuff in, in the meeting, um, and then maybe we can move some of this to like an asynchronous model. Um, asynchronous model meaning we don't have to talk about it all in the same meeting. All right, great. So, I'll add that afterwards, and we'll have that as a good example. So, all right, um, back to it. We're a little bit over here. Um, and we may need to have a meeting this week. Um, okay. So, let's see. I think we lost too much. All right. Um, all right. Um, let's see. We are sort of running these in the meeting. Let's see what happened with the... Um, I think we're almost done with this. So basically, it looked like that loaded. Um, 
Um, it got, got mad about the example not being in the right place, but it uh, should have been fine. It doesn't look like we changed anything there. But it was I don't know the docs still works. All right, okay. So I'll push this stuff up after we're done here. Um, and then, did we have anything else? It's because it needs to be two separate commits. Yeah. So what, what is the, we have any blocking things on that? And, and why is it failing? Okay, so I think you need to, docs.sh is not found. I think you probably need to rebase in the master branch or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, didn't, I, thought I thought we did that. that. Yeah, it would be weird that you, or was, was the build breaking for a while? I thought we didn't merge that whole thing in until it worked. This is something unrelated, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so maybe, yeah, let's try to figure out exactly what's on, on there. No, this is because this example was not found. You know, I think, yeah, okay, so, so, and then we also probably want to look at this because this is, hmm, do we need unbuffered output? I think we need unbuffered output on that. Um, Okay, we also need to track this. Okay. Um, all right. Um, okay, so this is, so Natasha, I think you just need to fix this issue here. It says it's not found. And like, you can't find that example. So, um, I think it's probably because the, you, the path you used to include it was not what it needed to be for. So, so, yeah, so this needs to start, and this is something that, that this happens because um, this, this happens because, you know, know honestly, I'm not exactly sure why it is. Oh, you know why this happens. It is because these files get included on the plugins page. And because we should, is this documented somewhere? No, I don't think this is documented anymore. We need to make sure we document this, actually. Um, so, um, so, so because this is included from the plugins page, this is not relative to this, or it's not relative. If you did a dot dot, we would assume that you're in docs, um, because you know this. These little include paths are, are relative to the file that they show up in in the documentation, and because this 
file gets included on the plugins page, and this is something that probably will change with the second party plugin stuff. Because this file gets included under docs slash plugins slash DFML model, dot dot ends up being uh, docs slash plugins instead of, um, you know, above docs. So if you, you need to prefix this with a slash, um, and then it should it should work. So let's say, so uh, this path is being included uh, from doc slash plugins slash model C. Um, uh, we need to prefix with a to make sure that it um, sir, uh, did have this relative to the root of a docs. I remember this one when I wrote it on here. You know, I just swash that. Um, okay, so, so and then the, the other, other thing is that, so, So this is, this is something that also was this this happened on another one of these. I'm surprised there's not a conflict, but um, if, if we have something under added, we really don't need to say add, right? Because we're already saying add. So basically, and this is another. This is like kind of like the commit message formatting thing. We know we we'll change that for later at some point. But basically, you know, it's added at a true model. So basically, added a true auto ML um, regression. update these to only use the setup config and setup py too. Um, because we got rid of setup common in between when these were created and, and when and when they're updated. So we need to we need to I would suggest maybe like you could probably just rerun this setup script. You could rerun this and then just remove setup you need let's see what is entry point txt. So this is how this is how you could migrate, you could say, and we can do it here, that's a good example. Um, so just using L, L, and so I'll, obviously I'll do this one because I'm doing it right now, but, um, so DFML service dev, this is how you can migrate a pull request that was created before we changed, um, GPM. Um, and then we want to set the author to the failure. Okay. 
So, so this is what you can do now. And then and you'll, you'll basically copy over these files. files. Um, So we because we, we want to be using the setup base version point wise we know how many containers have from the git stuff. So just run these commands here. Um, you know, like run run the create command again and then copy over the files. Um, like copy the files from the new one into the old one. And I think we'll probably, we'll probably need to, um, we'll probably need to wrap this medium up. Okay. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so, so and I mean, I have, since we've, we've been, since I've been messing with light GBM, then, then I have this right now, right? So you don't need to worry about this one. Um, so this would be, you know, model like you know, or just this, this sort of stuff. So basically, and this is the other thing that you need to be aware of when we're making uh, well, uh, this the plugin stuff will change when it's a second party plugin. Um, but, you know, right now, these URLs here are pointing to, um, you know, under the source tree of the if model, but it'll change if it's a second party plugin and then it would be. You know, something, something else entirely. If it was, um, you know, if it was a third-party plugin, it would sit under, um, you know, whatever your your username is that you're hosting under. So, and then you just want to so the PY is like it should be. Then the entry points needs to be updated to be, you know, whatever your entry points is. Um, Is there anything that you need 
to, to talk about right, right now that, to, to, to unblock you other than so you need to review, but is it, are you still working or is it, So I would say at a, at a minimum, right, you know, you have, you have those helper functions that you have right now. We, we can expand, you know, these are internal utility functions. I would say we just expand as necessary, right? So start, start with what you have right now. Uh, start with... Yeah, I mean, the keyword is probably going to be what you end up passing here. Yeah, you're probably just going to go pass faster keyword arguments. Um, with standard, let's see, the, yeah, the main thing is like, okay, do what I want. And I think you want probably just a different function call to capture standard out for standard error, right? Um, because I think we also have a pattern of reading for our time error. Um, uh, hmm. you, know, you know, I think so what is this? Because we have similar functions in here. Um, where are they? Okay, this is this is how I'd approach it a long, long time ago with this, um, is basically separating it out, and, and, and it might just be worth it to put these into the main code base here. Um, I'm not sure if this is exactly, you know, exactly what we want, but we could start with something like this. Oh, yeah. This is... Take, take, take a look at this and, and maybe take a look at the way that these end up getting used. Um, because I found that, that, you know, as a, that was, this was, this was my response to the, to basically the issues that you raised, right? It's like, how do you, how do you effectively create an interface into something like this? Right. And, and I found that splitting it out might actually be the best way to do it. Um, and then you could write, you know, even shorter invocations around this. Right. Um, so, so, for example, example, this is check, check output, output that essentially becomes, you know, create it and then get the output. Um, and then, then you have this wrapper around create. Um, and then you have this wrapper around stop. Um, and then that way you can check the error code. Um, and, and if you check the error code, then you know you attach, let's say, I believe we attached the process name, or yeah, we attached the command that we ran. Um, to the to the process. So if you call if you call if you use the function to the error code, then you you need to build an basically run the error of that, right? Um, with the with the information of what the what the um, process that was run is. Um, this is one way to do it, right? It's not man, definitely not saying it's the best way to do it. Not saying it's the way that we should do it. This is one option. So I would say sort of look at look at maybe the way that this was done, um, and then look at the way that you have your current usage, right, and decide whether it's you know something you know decide what makes sense, right, and and then you know put it you can you yeah you can decide what makes sense and then put it in the PR and we'll check that out. You know, um, and I think the test cases for this, you know, obviously we need test cases. Um, and just, just use sys.executable in any of the test cases, and that way you know, be sure that there will be a binary there to run. Okay, and so I'll put this, um, look at for one possible interface. So, um, for test cases, uh, is Alright. 
Um, anything else that needs to be immediately addressed for blockers? All right. Great. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Sorry we went over today. That, that every move kind of drew us a little bit off and, and got a lot to cover. But, all right. Have a good one. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk. This is, let's see. Do, do people feel like they want a, a Friday meeting this week? All right. If, if not, if, if people think, you know, what we'll do is it's all, all send out. I will send out um, a... Um, I'll send, send out a mail, and I'm thinking of changing the way that we're doing this. Is uh, meeting, oops, meeting agenda item requests ahead of time, and hopefully, so John will send out all for agenda items. Then um, you know if if if, 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 you, if you this this will allow us to plan effectively what's going to be in this meeting and what's going to be in maybe Friday meeting that we can have more agenda items that we can answer right um, because I think we're, we're we don't want to we this is not you know this is an okay way to do it but not probably the best way so um, all right thanks everyone have a good one bye.